Welcome to this Radcast of the Guy Fox and Jamin Show. On this episode, we're going to be exploring uh, the goals of the this this very Radcast itself, Guy Fox and Jamin. And uh, I'm coming at you from beautiful Orcas Island, uh, way up in the northwest corner of the state of Washington, bordering on Canada and the Pacific Ocean. I'm at the, the Doe Bay Ecological Re Resort. Um, and uh, I'll turn it over to, uh, to you, Guy, and, uh, who's in Belize, and please please give us an intro to the topic when you're ready. Thanks, Jamin. I'm coming to you from the Maya Mountains in western Belize today, which is where I spend most of my time. Today we want to talk about the goals for this show. Last time we talked about humanity and society and culture and where we are and in general, where we're headed and what, what we think we're trying to accomplish. And, and I guess the, not, uh, to the, the twin sides of the power of humanity. We talked about how powerful we are at driving other species to extinction, at creating smartphones so that we can have this conversation, at spoiling the air and fouling the water and eroding the soil into the ocean and at accumulating an amazing body of knowledge and art and literature and music. And so that, that we have this enormous power and yet at the same time, we're so cosmically insignificant or so it seems. So the, the universe is about 14 billion years old. Our species, Homo sapiens, has, has been in existence for 200,000 years. If the universe is all about us, the universe was very patient in waiting for us. <laughs> so, 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 so we played that that back and forth, that 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 give and take of what it means to be human, what it means to be powerful humans with the power that we have, with the hubris that we have, and it's a, you know, to be fair, it's a difficult conversation, and I think that's one of the reasons most people are not having this conversation. Fox, your thoughts before we dig into today's topic of of, the, of the, the relatively minor issue, cosmically speaking, of the goals. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm uh, Fox, as you can see. I'm here in Greece on the beautiful island of Spetsi. And um, I also want to reiterate, you know, the, the, the relative insignificance of what we're doing, um, you know, uh, against the cosmic backdrop. Um, that said, uh, it is crucial that we do have uh, a goal, uh, uh, something that we're concentrating on, um, so as to move uh, the conversation uh, forward in a meaningful way, not only amongst ourselves, um, as we'll discuss, um, but how can we become part of the, the conversations that are already taking place, the work that other people are doing, um, how can we, you know, tap into all that um, and at the same time find some way of, you know, moving it forward, making a contribution that, you know, um, and the, this, this, this may be hubris on my part, you know, perhaps a contribution that, um, you know, nobody else is making in the precise way that we're doing it, um, which is to say that we all have a part to play. I certainly couldn't agree more with that. And I think as step one of any endeavor such as this. Step one is education. It, it goes by many names. I'm, I'm an educator, I'm a teacher. It's, it's, it's not merely what I do, it's who I am. And I wanna start with a quote from Ajishanti, the spiritual leader. 
about enlightenment, but you could stick the word in it, education in instead of enlightenment, and we're in the same place. He says, quote, enlightenment is a destructive process. It has nothing to do with becoming better or being happier. Enlightenment is the crumbling away of untruth. It's seeing through the facade of pretense. It's the complete eradication of everything we imagined to be true. Or to learn anything of significance requires an enormous amount of unlearning along the way. We are enculturated into this society, into this set of living arrangements by going to public school, by hearing the same narrative over and over from everybody around us, from, from buying into the assumption on growth parent paradigm to thinking that we are the most important species to ever occupy the universe and on and on the list goes. It, it requires a lot of unlearning of the things we take for granted before we can begin to crumble away at the untruth that surrounds us all. So I think one of the goals of this show is crumbling away at the untruths and exposing the lies my culture tells me. Sometimes, in fact, most of the time, they aren't even overt lies. Nobody is going around saying that we can have infinite growth on a finite planet. If you say it out loud, it sounds ridiculous. But everybody I know is just assuming that's the case is assuming that we can have infinite growth on this most wondrous of planets without any negative consequences. So let's expose some of those assumptions, some of those mm, unrealities that we surreally take for granted. I, I think that's one of our goals here. Fox? Yeah, that uh, to continue that same line of thinking, um, that quote you read uh, is precisely... Uh, the point of Jean-Jacques Rousseau's uh, great book on education called Emile. Um, and I think that's significant as an 18th century uh, Enlightenment philosopher. Um, he was very much uh, at odds, sort of the odd man out, uh, amongst his Enlightenment peers who were propagating um, what today we might call a bourgeois ideology. Um, uh, in essence, uh, that enlightenment, that education uh, is this uh, linear process um, of learning or perhaps even an upward spiral of, of learning um, where you just kind of go from light to light and that in so doing, humanity moves forward in, this, uh, in the way that, you know, we now largely take to be the case, historically speaking. Um, Nothing could be more untrue in light of the fact that it's those very ideologies that sort of buttress the kind of economy uh, that we have today that's responsible for a lot of um, the environmental devastation um, and also the suffering of a lot of humanity um, because of, you know, the, the progress, which in a lot of ways has been undeniably real. Um, but not really learning the lesson of having to unlearn, to open our minds, to to accept uh, the, the 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 very limited uh, sphere of our knowledge, uh, so that we can move from this individual individualistic, you know, um, way of being in the world uh, to a collective, you know, corps d'esprit that not only includes other humans, you know, the, 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 the people, um, but the planet itself. Yeah, and I, I love what both of you guys were saying. Uh, Guy, just to um, talk a little bit about my, just anecdotally, and then, then we can get on to the other, maybe get on to the other goals, but, in, but you've articulated it so beautifully, that exposing uh, the assumptions, the unreality, and um, the non-overt lies or sort of the covert lies and i'll just kind of tell to share from my own experience prior to watching your first video presentation uh guy i kind of had a picture of the world where basically you know we're okay yeah we got this climate change thing going on but you know we've got all this technology and we're so you know it was just sort of more of a feeling 
kind of an experiential feeling of being a human on this planet, uh, coming from this place of tremendous privilege, etc. Um, you know, I just kind of had this feeling that, yeah, how, how could this privilege ever go away? Um, and uh, Guy, you did such an, you've done such an amazing job of really shining a bright light on these assumptions and unreality and covert lies that we've we all tell ourselves and each other um, just through the very way that we, the way that we live. Um, you know, why tell them when you can show them? Our very actions bespeak and belie um, this un underlying philosophy that, hey, we're okay, we're cool, we're the most important ones, and we got, we got this under control. Yeah, and I, th I think a, a primary reason that we get stuck in these covert lies or assumptions, largely unquestioned, willful ignorance, it goes by many names. Uh, I think the reason we get trapped there is because it's so darn convenient. I mean, look at what we get out of the deal. Um, people who look a lot like us are really here. We're benefiting greatly. <laughs> For the most part, we get to do what we want. You know, we're, we're not people of color living in Northern Africa and the Middle East who don't have the same options we have. And so we, we don't, we don't want to hear that there are negative consequences of our actions individually, much less collectively. And when you make it collective, it seems so abstract because it is abstract. When, when we talk about things like consumption amounting to X number of dollars, that all seems so unapproachable for us. We can't get a grip around millions, billions, trillions. Anything that ends with an alien, it seems to me, is beyond our grasp intellectually. And so we're mired in our personal lives and our personal in, in our cases, to a great extent, our personal privileges and what that means to us. And, and you're telling me that that there are adverse consequences associated with what we're doing here? Well, I, I don't see it. And I don't see it because in large part, I don't want to see it. And I certainly don't want to talk about it. Nobody else is talking about it. You, you guys must be a little off the rocker there. If, if you're willing to go to these places that nobody else is willing to go, I never heard that. Uh, and so clearly it can't be the case, or if it is the case, it must not be very important. About that, Fox? Wow, that, that was uh, really well said. Um, I, I think that's, uh, that actually goes directly um, to one of the goals of this sh uh, show, uh, is to talk about, um, and not only amongst ourselves, but with others, um, that uh, you know are willing um, to join us in conversation, and talking about what's what's at stake, what is the what is the meaning of these of these numbers, these things that seem you know so immediately abstract, uh, precisely because they're they're so you know indirect, um, and they're measured on a scale that's that's beyond what you know I can observe in my immediate environment uh, for the most part. Um, but to talk to people, to root down into this and that area um, where uh, we see um, room um, f for, uh, f for conversation that not only, you know, enlightens in sort of the classical sense by, you know, simply educating us, oh, I learned something today, um, but also upsets um, assumptions. Um, and so for me, that's what, what the, 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 the forum of the Radcast is all about. It's about rooting down um, in such a way where we're able to clear the ground upon which um, we can build uh, anew, uh, new knowledge, uh, new ways of being in the world, new ways of cooperation, uh, incorporation, incorporating, you know, this area of knowledge with that. Um, it's happening on the level of conversation because that's that's what the radcast is all about. But of course, we have the goal um, to, to turn that into um, action. Yeah. So what does it mean, right? So we make these assumptions, and then we find out that they're not true. We live a life that we were born into, and we're we're largely doing what everybody around us is doing, and so sort of meeting those societal expectations. In fact, we seem to be successful by all the conventional metrics. So 
what do we do when we find out that there are lies this culture tells us? And generally, in, in a whisper in the ear, so that it's easy to ignore if we want. What do we do? How do we act? What do we become? In, in what ways are we changed as individuals that might at the level of society? So I think that's, that's the next goal for us beyond education. And this gets tricky. This gets really tricky because we can enter the domain that I spent years in as a university teacher of giving people advice or sometimes more overtly telling, telling them what they should do, telling students what they should do when they go out there into society. And that, that wasn't a big problem for me back then, but now I'm a lot more circumspect in telling people what they should do. And I, I can hardly figure out how to convince myself to do things that I think are important and necessary, much less do I feel like I'm in a position or in a role to tell people what actions they need to take to better the world, whatever that means. So for me, at least, this is where the, this gets um, a lot more than, than the educational part, than the enlightened part, than the spreading the knowledge part is now what? Now what? So this is the tricky part of the conversation, and that's why I'm going to turn it over to Fox, a wiser man than I. What I have in mind for these radcasts, at least in part, is um, to, to widen the circle of the conversation that we're having amongst the three of us. Um, for example, um, I know, I know um, a man by the name of John Thackera who headed the George Perception um, forum in uh, the Netherlands, uh, I think it was in Amsterdam, um, uh, for a number of years. Um, he uh, is running a number of books, one of uh, which uh, is called uh, How to Thrive in the Next Economy, where he goes into any number of different areas um, showing um, where there are problems in the way we're doing things and showing solutions that are already um, taking place, things that people are implementing that if done on a much larger scale, um, you know, would amount to a, a difference uh, that makes a difference. So it's not at all a, theoretic, a theoretical kind of thing. So just using um, uh, John Thacker as an example, um, having a conversation with him and saying, um, you've been rooting down into this whole area of the, you know, the whole notion of a new economy. You know, what is, what is the new economy? And what, is, what does that have to do not only with us, um, but, you know, with, with the audience? Um, and what about all of these various areas? And kind of rooting down into each, uh, and then kind of going from there to talking with other folks who are specialists in other areas. And it's not so much just getting this piece of knowledge and that, upsetting this assumption or that. That's all part of it. But it's kind of the subterranean thing, I think, like a rhizomic structure, right? Where you root down and you find out that the connections are actually um, to be found um, under the surface. And so that we can start identifying those connections where they exist um, and then create uh, and move from just, you know, merely having conversations um, to forming um, community uh, and a community that's action oriented, that has a purpose. Um, so that, for example, if we, you know, get more and more people interested in permaculture, um, well, um, you know, why not do something in that area? If there are solutions taking place in that area right now that would make a, a difference, um, then clearly that's an actionable goal. Um, and so, you know, how do we get from A to B to C on through Z? Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, but uh, Clearly, we know that we don't want to be talking just for the sake of uh, upsetting people. What, what occurs to me is what can we do together? What kind of collective action can we take? And um, so before all the you know, trillions of individual actions that we're all going to end up taking, um, uh, I'd like my, where, I, where I'm going is take one sort of abstract step back and say, okay, um, in addition to the ongoing actions that we take every day, 
can we take some time out of every day to collectively design the pathway to utopia? Design and plan the entire set of actions at the macro and at the individual level. What, what can we actually do? And a, a big word that comes to mind is orchestration. How do we orchestrate a transformation in the pathway of, of planet Earth and humanity from the death spiral that we're on? How do we get, in, get onto an off-ramp of that superhighway death spiral towards a whole new highway towards utopia? And um, so, uh, you know, one example of this orchestration, like, you know, if, if, if I want for there to be more, you know, permaculture and more regenerative agriculture, well, one, you know, an individual action is I could go to my own backyard and plant a garden. On the larger planetary orchestration level, um, uh, Fox and I have, have worked on co-creating um, a new standard for the global economy called Triple C, Certified Compassionate Companies. So uh, to the extent that we can orchestrate the promulgation of that standard throughout the global economy, we will be helping to orchestrate actions of billions of people uh, buying the right stuff, doing the right things that will actually be healing towards the planet. Um, as opposed to just individual actions, I hope that I hope that conveyed, and I'll I'll turn it over to you guys. Well, we by yeah, and by orchestration, Damon, I uh, I, I understand you to mean something um, that's uh, a decentered form of orchestration, where um, individuals are working um, as a part of a collective effort, um, but not one that's in any way top down and dictated um, by, you know, some subcommittee, you know, or worse, a dictator, right? Um, uh, benevolent or not, but that instead, um, it, and this goes to the very essence of, of uh, collective intelligence, it, it's precisely a form of intelligence um, that transcends that of the individual only because the individuals are, are, are participating in it in such a way where um, they're not being controlled uh, from above, but rather it's a synergistic process, um, and and therefore orchestration. Um, and I don't think that that's a bad uh, word, um, but uh, one to be seen in the context of a decentered form um, of of intelligence, right, uh, and act and action. Exactly, and I, I, I would I would encapsulate that by saying it's not rather than being one individual or one group or cabal or whatever that orchestrates the collective. This is about the collective coming together, forming a collective intelligence, and collectively orchestrating. Drum roll, the collective. So this is the collective orchestrating the collective, as opposed to a small subgroup orchestrating the collective. How, however, paradoxically or ironically. Um, one of the goals that I would propose for this show is that precisely we, the three of us, orchestrate the formation of a larger community, a larger collective, which can then do what I just mentioned, orchestrate the whole. Back to you guys. Yeah, that, so that, that brings up maybe an issue we could talk about for an entire show is what is collective intelligence? intelligence what is collective intelligence how is it implemented what pieces does it rely upon is it hierarchical in nature is it bottom up can it be orchestrated at the global level without taking into account what happens at the local level so i'd like to have a conversation about the pieces and how the parts come together or not now, I, I'm, I'm thinking here of, of Don Hinley's small town in all of us that we seem to have left behind. And, and those small towns being part of a greater whole. And I'm, I'm, I'm sort of struggling for words here regarding how, how we orchestrate the actions, how we inspire the actions, at what level the actions are inspired and carried out. What Again, where where are we going? We we know that where we're at now, and, and that the path is is Thelma and Louise over the cliff. 
what what turns are necessary, even if they're not sufficient. What turns are necessary? What actions are necessary to consider? Not ending up Thelma and Louise and having to look down. Totally, and and I believe the answer is in collective intelligence, which we have yet to discuss thoroughly on on this show. We can take a whole episode for that, um, but. Uh, I believe collective intelligence will precisely give us that multi-perspective view of the whole, um, ultimately encompassing the entire planet, and uh, that we can co-create um, precisely that off-ramp from the Thelma and Louise default path down to the bottom of the canyon. Um, uh, define it, design it, and then design, literally design the orchestration of the transformation at a planetary scale. So this is gargantuan stuff. And I just mentioned the one, you know, the, the, the standard for the, for the new economy, uh, for a compassionate economy, Triple C, that's just one example of a tool or a gear in this giant orchestration machinery that we're gonna need to co-create collectively to ultimately transform um, not just the economy, but human culture, our entire set of living arrangements, um, ultimately transform what, what, is it, what does it mean to be human? Why are we here, right? Um, and so ultimately that's, that's how I see as the goal, the goal for the show. I think that's great. And I think that's a great launching point for our next episode. <clears throat> yeah, this is something um, we'll want to ask um, all of the people with whom we have conversations. Um, Precisely because, you know, the very essence of collective intelligence is itself, as you were pointing out earlier, uh, Jamin, um, a, a product of, of collective intelligence. However circular, you know, that may seem, um, it's not like any one of us can just, you know, pontificate and poof, there it is. The, the, I, I think that this is going to be an ongoing conversation, but we can start that conversation um, as soon as the next episode. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, uh, Guy, I'll give you the last word, and then, then we can wrap. Only a few words to wrap this. I look forward to the continuing conversation about where we're going. And I especially look forward to having a conversation with the two of you and ultimately to widening that conversation. Thank you again to both of you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Guy. Thank you, Fox. Great work gentlemen and thank you all for watching you are a part if you're watching this you are a part of the conversation and please submit your comments you know let's really let's expand it now uh, why wait all right and we'll delve more into the collective intelligence in our next episode so thank you both gentlemen thank you all for watching look forward to seeing you on the next episode thank you so much <laughs>